All right, well, we're going to start back onto some chemistry here. And uh, we did discuss neutralization reactions just before the break. And I didn't actually give you a note on it. So here is the note on uh, neutralization reactions. And neutralization reaction always occurs when you have a reaction between an acid and a base. Now, some of you watched the video that I posted before the break, and we did discuss this to some extent, but it's good to start with a little bit of review. And the interesting thing about neutralization reactions is what is produced is always water and a salt. And there's a variety of different types of salts. The most common salt is table salt right here, NaCl. But anytime you get a, usually a metal and a non-metal reacting, and forming a compound like this, they're called a salt. Now the salts that can form, they can be soluble in water. That means they dissolve in water, just like table salt. Sometimes you dissolve table salt in water and warm water if you want to gargle with it, for example, for a sore throat, what have you. But sometimes they're not soluble. So what you actually get is what we discussed a while ago in one of our labs, a precipitate. So you can have a situation where you have solid particles that are actually suspended in the liquid and that would be the salt that's produced but nevertheless if the salt is a precipitate or if it's soluble it is a salt and the general equation is always an acid plus a base will react to produce a salt and water now this is probably the most famous one of them all HClAQ, hydrochloric acid, reacts with NaOHAQ, sodium hydroxide, to produce the salt, NaCl aqueous, meaning this is a soluble, dissolvable in water compound, plus the water. So what happened here? Well, we had the acid reacting with the base to make the salt and the water. And what actually happens during this is the metal from here combines with the non-metal from here, the sodium combines with the chlorine, we'd use the crisscross rule to come up with the formula and we have NaCl. And then the H, the hydrogen, combines with the OH, which produces liquid water, H2O. Because remember, it's H combining with OH, which we can write as HOH, but it's usually not done so. This is a typical neutralization reaction. Now, I did assign some work on this. Uh, let's do one of them together. The rest are mostly just reading and answering. And uh, let's take a look at section 5.2 in our textbook, which is available online, as you know. And the answers to all these questions are also available online, as you know. And let's just try one. Let's try number two, see what it's like. And we'll uh, take it from there. Well, let's give a shot to number two. So the textbook, here is number two right here. When H2SO4 aqueous, so this is sulfuric acid, an acid, reacts with Mg bracket OH bracket 2 aqueous, this is a base, magnesium hydroxide, the products are MgSO4 aqueous, which is, since it's aqueous, is a soluble salt called magnesium sulfate, and of course, the other product has to be water because it's a neutralization reaction. So we want to write a balanced chemical equation for this neutralization reaction. So let's go back to the board and we can write this out. H2SO4 aqueous, that's the sulfuric acid, plus MgOH bracket two, that's the magnesium hydroxide, that is the base. And these formulas would be found by using the crisscross rule. Remember the valences, the ionic charges, that's how we come up with these formulas to produce the salt. The metal goes first. And we were told it's soluble in water, aqueous. Magnesium has a valence ionic charge of two plus and the sulfate polyatomic ion has an ionic charge of two minus. So if you do the crisscross rule, the twos would reduce out and we just have this formula here plus 
the water, which is a liquid. Now, now let's see here. I think they asked us to balance it. If you take a look here, in terms of balancing, there's one sulfate polyatomic ion and one sulfate polyatomic ion here. There's one magnesium metal, one magnesium metal. But if you take a look at the hydrogens here, you have two hydrogens here, two hydrogens there, which gives us a total of four. Well, that means we need four hydrogen here. Two times two is four. If you take a look at the oxygens uh, on each side that are not part of the polyatomic ion, that would be the oxygen right there. Two times one is two, and lo and behold, two times one is two, and we balanced it. So today's the first lesson. I hope they get better. It is a review to get us started. I'll be back tomorrow with another lesson.